making sure this is on correctly. Thanks so much for giving me the chance to talk to you this morning and to share with you an interesting case that I saw when I did my neuro-ophthalmology month back in November. Um, hopefully there'll be some interesting pictures and uh, you'll be reminded of some things that you already knew. Um, so to start, our case um, involved, no surprise, a 12-year-old girl. Um, she ha uh, was a right-handed female, which we like to talk about in neurology, who presented with... Do I have to wear this? Yeah? Do I have to wear it? It's falling off. Yeah? Okay. Um, three to four months of redness and swelling of her left eye. Uh, she had, in talking with her a little bit more, she talked about having left facial numbness for up to three years. Um, when I t asked about pain, she'd only had some intermittent burning, um, which was worse with eye rubbing in the morning, you know. Um, and then also one episode of left jaw pain when she was chewing popcorn a couple days prior. Um, her, they had gone to see her family physician who told her that it was probably a Bell's palsy, showed her some horrific pictures, was scared a 12 year old quite a bit. Um, but parents weren't really convinced and so they, uh, they pushed and a couple months later went back and said, you know, we really like to see an eye doctor because we're concerned there's something going on with her eye. Um, and otherwise her past medical history and neurological history um, were not really concerning at all. She, um, the patient was most concerned actually about a little skin tag that she had under her eye that people at school made fun of. Um, that was her biggest concern. So um, on exam, uh, her vitals were normal, her general exam was normal, um, vision was almost normal, um, stereopsis was affected, and uh, she did have proptosis on the left. Um, also on just looking at her appearance, the left, her left upper eyelid was a bit totic and um, her lower lid was retracted. What I was most impressed by and what parents hadn't mentioned yet in going through the whole history was the fullness of her, um, the left side of her face. I said, well, when did that start? You know, um, and they said, oh, you know, well, her grandparents came to visit last week and, and they asked about that, but we hadn't really noticed it. She had no tenderness to palpation. And, and here's a picture. It's not a great picture, but you can appreciate that the left side of her face looks much fuller. And you, it's, it's really tough on the, on the quality of these images to tell um, the ptosis of her left eye, but that's there as well. Otherwise, totally healthy, you know, not in pain kid who's doing her usual um, things. So the um, rest of the exam, which, you know, we do a thorough exam, um, slit lamp was normal, dilated fundus exam showed a little bit of fullness of the optic nerve on the left, um, as well as on OCT, she had a thickened nerve fiber layer on the left, and um, everything else was normal. So what else would you want to know? Anything else that you think I'm holding back on you? Um, so one thing we really like to do is look at old pictures to see, even though you know parents see her every day and they're noticing it's a problem now, how long was this going on? So we went and dad happened to have their Christmas picture from the year before, and again, I'm seeing the patient in November, um, and he pulled it out from Christmas, and sure, sure enough, um, her, the left side of her face looked swollen there, and you know, parents' stomach drops because they, you know, they just weren't aware of it going back that far. So um, just to kind of summarize her, she's a 12-year-old girl who has left-sided proptosis, um, subtle left optic nerve edema. Um, this has probably been going on for a long time, um, and it's not really causing her any pain, just maybe a little bit um, of change in her appearance. So came up with a wide differential, but knew that we weren't really going to know until we um, did a bit more testing, largely imaging and eventually labs. Um, so we talked about retral bulbar processes, extraconal masses, um, graves, although she did not have any, again, restriction of her extraocular movements. You might expect a little bit more lid retraction as opposed to ptosis in graves. Um, and here's the first image. So she went and got an MRI. Fortunately, they were able to schedule her the following day. As you can see here, um, there's an extensive skull base tumor, which is centered, appears to be centered in the left cavernous sinus and the medial portion of the left middle cranial fossa um, and the left pterygopalatine fossa. Some more images in coronal view. So the tumor is extending posteriorly through the trigeminal foramen into the anteromedial portion of the left cerebellopontine angle. Um, it displaces the brainstem. Um, as these tend to do, and uh, eventually goes through the foramen ovale into the left upper neck. 
So the radiologist um, gave a differential probably of a uh, small blue cell malignancy, such as a rhabdo or uh, granulitic sarcoma, um, or I mean a Ewing's, and recommended biopsy. So prior to going to biopsy, um, ENT was involved, and um, they wanted to get some additional imaging, so a CT was performed. And here are those images. Again, not as helpful as the MRI, but again, indicating an extensive destructive skull base mass um, with high attenuation, indicative of a neoplasm. And so a biopsy was performed. Um, I, I believe that the um, ophthalmologic surgeons, neurosurgeons, plastics, ENT all had a discussion, and eventually um, ENT were the ones who went in and performed a biopsy. The biopsy results um, were reviewed both here and at CHOP in Pennsylvania. They were found to be CD99 positive. Um, CD99 is expressed on all leukocytes, but highest on thymocytes, and is known to play a role in T cell adhesion, migration, activation. It is positive in Ewing's, and as well in granulosa cell tumors. Picture over there is Vimentin, um, which is a member of the intermediate filament family, um, along with microtubules and actin, makes up uh, the cytoskeleton. And that is usually used as a marker for uh, granulosa cell tumors. Um, also, the fish was positive for the EWS FLI1, which is a marker for Ewing's. Um, and I'll review that translocation shortly. So the fish was positive, but the PCR was negative. So, go, but based on the CD99, the, um, the vimentin, and the fish, the leading diagnosis at that point was Ewing sarcoma. So that would be consistent with the radiologist had thought in terms of a round cell tumor of the bone and soft tissue. Um, usually affects males, uh, or the, the population they say to you know, think of as male teenagers, or maybe you've anecdotally seen that, that more in that population. Um, they're difficult to classify, and so that's why additional immuno, uh, testing is necessary, and you want to be really sure of the pathology before you take any other additional steps. Um, the picture down below shows the translocation. So the EWS protein from chromosome 22 and the um, FLI protein from 11, or the rather gene, are translocated. And that translocation, the EWS FL1, is found in 95% of Ewing's. Um, and then there's a different translocation, the EWS ERG, that's found in the other 5%, or 5 to 10%. Um, and again, in Ewing, CD99 is positive and CD45 is negative. And that's because CD45 is usually a lymphocytic um, tumor marker. So um, a little bit more about Ewing's. Um, if this were Ewing's, uh, the treatment is usually trifold, um, using chemo, resection, and radiation. And as is with most tumors, um, the prognosis is based on the staging. So um, and the survival for Ewing's is about five years, 70 to 80 percent when treated with chemo. Um, and then long-term with METs can be less than 10%, but in some places they talk about it being as high as 25 or 30. Um, so to, to do further workup on this patient, um, we performed an osseous survey, and that, no, to no surprise, showed increased uptake in the left facial bones. Um, she had a normal echo, a normal chest CT, all these things were reassuring. She had a central line placed and was admitted with the idea that she was most likely going to be starting chemo and had a bone mar marrow biopsy performed just to make sure that her marrow had not been affected. Um, and then, the day before she was supposed to start chemo, the path came back, and it was found to be EWS ERG uh, PCR negative and confirmed to be a meningioma. So, um, meningioma. Uh, a third of all brain tumors, so um, the most frequent primary brain tumor, um, usually benign, but obviously in the CNS can cause significant mortality and morbidity. Um, incidence usually increases with age, usually rare in kids unless they've had previous radiation or have a, another syndrome such as NF2. Um, usually affects females more than males. And some of the other risk factors that I read about, um, I guess radiation is used for treatment of tinea capitis or has been in the past. Um, and atomic bomb survivors, there's also some literature suggesting that head trauma can increase the risk of meningioma, but I don't know that they're totally convinced yet. I included this picture to show that when they talk about uh, primary tumors in kids, they don't even list meningioma. So it wasn't that I thought it was there. All right. So often present, um, meningiomas arise from the dura, usually at places where um, this, the skull has a dural reflection, so there's a fold. So things like the falx cerebri, tentorium cerebelli, also um, next to the venous sinuses. 
um, nerve sheaths, choroid plexus, and um, one study noted the incidence including autopsy just in the general population to be about 0.9%. Um, they can present as seizures, focal findings, which is um, how she essentially presented, well, she didn't have visual field changes, but actually a third of patients with meningioma when tested will present with visual field loss, defects, and diplopia. Um, and so you can, you can have focal signs. You can, they can also be um, asymptomatic and found incidentally when you, people have imaging for other reasons or again on autopsy. So um, in terms of diagnosis, um, gradings based on histology. This is just again showing you her MRI um, because on T1 usually they're iso intense or hypo intense, which I think here is probably iso intense um, to the gray matter. Um, and then on T2 they're usually iso intense or hyper intense. Um, and have a strong enhancement with gadolinium. Um, in reading about it, meningioma often they refer to the tail sign, which is the um, dural thickening that kind of tapers off into a tail peripherally. And differential, fr um, so MRI often is helpful in the diagnosis as we saw in this case. CT, as again shown in this case, shows that it displaces the normal brain. And PET is often used for prognosis or recurrence, especially in case of MATS. So differential included other th um, infectious process, oncologic processes, METs, and inflammatory lesions, although this girl had been feeling so well that we were less concerned about an inflammatory process. Treatment for meningioma depends on grading location. Um, in the case of, her, in her case, complete resection um, is the goal. Um, a lot of times they'll aim for partial resection or even surveillance if it's really in a place where it's not bothering someone and um, we can continue to monitor. Radiation therapy is also used more frequently, as I've seen, in people with multiple meningiomas who've had already had multiple craniotomies. Um, and then we know that survival-wise, people with higher grade lesions, so um, WHO grade two and three, are more likely to have invasive disease, local recurrence, and shorter survival. So um, the timing could not have been weirder. Um, this patient who I saw back in November and um, did go to the OR yesterday. Um, and so uh, prior to the surgery, they um, met with neurosurgeon ENT, planned to um, do a resec resection, attempting to remove as much of the intracranial portion of lesion as they could. They prepared parents that likely this is going to need to go in stages because of its extent, um, that they were going to start at the front, try to get the part that was affecting the orbit, and move posteriorly. And again, she had pre-op um, MRI for improved navigation in comparison to her previous. And it, it didn't appear to have changed much in the two months. Um, and probably had been there for an incredibly long time. She's only 12. Um, and so yesterday, she had a neurosurgery. Um, they did a left frontoparietal craniotomy. They drilled into the orbital root and lateral orbital wall to decompress the orbit um, and down into the fossa floor as well for resection. They did interoperative monitoring um, and the frozen path confirmed meningioma. And she was transferred to the ICU and um, to the best of my knowledge is doing okay at this point. Um, intraoperatively, they commented on um, transient bradycardia um, when they would stimulate the fifth nerve. Okay, so my references, and I just want to thank all the people that helped me during my rotation. I also wanted to, uh, you know all of them, um, highlight that when you look up neuro-ophthalmology in Google, the third image is this. <laughs> so, we're all, we're all pretty lucky. All right, but thank you for your time and um, letting me share this interesting case. Questions, comments? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a stunning change in diagnosis. I hate to do that to a family, but when she was up and down, yeah. she was getting moved to the hormone world, which is the vision of Fred had sort of gone, and then he's on this weird vision. You know, the, the history, though, you know, I mean, New Orleans, I know this is a world slow, but I mean, this would be really slow for a year. Yeah. Yeah, and in retrospect, obviously, we have all the information now. It does make sense for it to have been a meningioma, which we know um, can be incredibly slow growing, insidious, and change. Well, I'm happy for the parents. <laughs> it's such a different thing from the diagnosis. Yeah, especially when you, th you were told your kid had a Bell's palsy.
No, that's why I showed that picture. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, I could see other 